which um, is the Cars your band? I've written some songs. Uh -huh. um, do other members of the band bring songs to do on a Cars album? No. I write all the songs. And that's all understood and accepted? That's it's understood and accepted because I formed a band to do those songs. Basically, I'm a songwriter more than a musician. If the Cars is a vehicle for your songs, why a solo album? I'm not a car. I'm a person that can write many songs and do many things on tape, some of which uh, I could do differently. It's just for variance, variation, fun. Do you perceive the Rick Kasek solo album is going to be quite substantially different from... Uh, I would hope so. I would hope so. The songs will come from the same person, but I think that it'll... Yeah, it'll sound different, better. I want it. Welcome to Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast. I'm Dave. And I'm Donna. And we're talking classic Ocasek solo albums. Woo-woo! Wee-hee! <laughs> hey, Donna, guess what I did today? What did you do today, Dave? I, I hung out with BB. Super fan BB! I did. I hung out with BB. Awesome. How is BB doing? BB's doing great. Uh, shout out to BB. Um, you know, he's different in person. In what way? Well, he's he's like six foot tall. Oh. And but his arms are like seven foot long. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> well, helps helps him play the guitar. Uh, okay, all right. You talk you talk about scraped knuckles though. <laughs> wow. I was gonna say, was he in a movie called Any Which Way But Loose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> and then the other thing is, you know, how you see his pictures, you know, he's all business in front, you know. Oh, yeah. Party in back, man. Really? Back. Three foot long mullet. Nuh uh. I shit you not. Three foot long mullet. Nuh uh. So he's, he's got six feet to play with. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah. Cause yeah. It, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe that you're not just messing He'll, with me. He'll he'll confirm it on on Facebook or Twitter. I'm sure. Did you take a picture of the back of his head? He's very self conscious about his three foot long mullet and seven foot long arms. Well, how what proof do I have? <laughs> trust me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> of course I trust you, Dave. You know I do. B B B will confirm. Okay. All right. All right. So what'd you guys okay. do? Uh, we we watched a little film called Turbo Charge. Waha! Yeah. And did he Pretty, like it? He, I think he loved it. <laughs> I bet he did. I'm sure he got all the jokes. He did. <laughs> yes. So it's awesome. awesome. I, 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 never, I never get tired of that movie. Oh, I just don't. I know. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> and I quote it all the time in my head. In fact, I don't remember what Sarah was doing the other day, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she said, the sack. And we just <laughs> rolled laughing. <laughs> At first, I was like, did you just say the sack? And she's all, I did. And so then we just started the laughing. The sack. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, that's awesome. That's where you do it. Gosh, we got to get All right, let's get to the news. Mm -hmm. Dante, oh. his new album's out. Yes. I've, I've listened to it probably a half dozen times. Love it. Oh, nice. Love it. Love it. Um, it's my favorite Dante album because it scares the shit out of me the least. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, sure, here, here's how I gauge Dante's work. Okay. You kind of like, um, like you can go like on a scale of darkness and depth with Dante. Okay. Um, like, like, okay. Like a movie rating. Okay, so like if if you kind of go the, the artists that I that I like, 
that are Dante like, like Greg Hawks, his his uh, instrumental album is a rated G. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Kraftwerk, or if you want to pronounce it pr- uh, correctly, Kraftwerk. <laughs> uh, I thought you were gonna say Kraftwerk. I, no, <laughs> Kraftwerk is a, I would say like a PG thirteen. Okay. okay. Gary Newman whom Dante loves too. You know, you get in like early Gary Newman, it's kind of PG, but Gary Newman now, he's more like a rated R. Oh. Right? Dante, that dude's an NC-17. <laughs> One, because if it's, his, if it's his scary stuff, it'll scare the living shit out of you. Mm-hmm. But with, even with out-of-body experience, I mean, the depth of things that you can, you can just hear. That's why, Always with earbuds, always yeah. earbuds. But even you know, listening to it in my car, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, just fantastic. Uh, I'm so jealous. I haven't heard the whole album yet. I've only heard the stuff that he released a little bit early. Um, yeah. I'm kind of holding out for CD. I really want to have it on CD. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to get CD too. Oh, yeah. um, but she, you know, the as much as you know, some of his music you know, can, can scare the crap out of me because I've talked about it before that this is why I can't bring myself to watch, um, Dante's movies yet, mm. because do I really want to let Dante burn a visual into my brain? Right. <laughs> do I? <laughs> I think not. <laughs> it's bad enough if you can't get the scary sounds out of your head, but uh, visually you're going to be a goner. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the whole the whole uh, the whole album is just is fantastic. And um, my my favorite on this is uh, one called the Lighthouse. Okay. But they the cool thing about it is is that they all flow into each other. Right. Right. Which which is really cool. So you really have to pay attention when it, it flows into a new into a new song. Okay. But uh, the, the Lighthouse, I really like it, and it really has a lot of. Uh, of uh, Greg, Greg-like things in it, I think. Yeah. To me, anyway. I don't know if that was Dante's intention or not, but... Well, I do believe he said that this album... Well, certainly this album is more melodic than his other soundscapes that he's done, where where he's had more, um, you know, more just creating a scene with his sounds versus creating a rhythm so much um and i do think he said that this was he felt that this was definitely more greg like himself than yeah than his other ones too so but not but not greg rated g greg <laughs> this was nc 17 greg yikes yeah i can't wait to listen to it um i think i've said before when it, when witches first came out his previous album i listened to it for the first time on headphones while i was going for a run <laughs> at in dusk. The woods. <laughs> yeah yeah through the woods at dusk and i was just like oh boy <laughs> that was a bad oh, choice <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's the cool thing about listening with earbuds in though because mm-hmm. he'll he'll have sounds or voices uh in there and then it'll you know it'll be like on one channel like mm-hmm. in, in the back of your head right and then you're like Okay, was that just on here or was that real? Oh, you know? I know. I was find constantly yourself doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're constantly head checking because you like was that behind me? Did that did someone just sneak up on me? <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah. spooky, some spooky stuff for sure. Yeah. So it's weird. like it's like Rick Ocasek, I'm trying to act natural at the uh, <laughs> Shake It Up party. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> what? Huh? what? <laughs> Oh man, Dante's so good. I so wish that he had been able to come to the Boston event. Yeah. Um, because man, I just can't wait to meet him in person. But maybe someday. I I don't I don't rule it out. There'll be some other reason to get together with everybody. Sure thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, in in other news, we we just have some <clears throat> updates. Unless you have anything new. I don't think I do. No. Okay. So. We, we wanted to update our listeners on Prince Benjamin Orr. Oh, yes, yes. I wonder if I can read this in an, with an accent. Because <laughs> we, we, we were able to get um, some, some screen caps of, of all the, the story between the reincarnated 
Prince Benjamin Orr <laughs> um, from our pal Becky. Yes, thank you, Becky. So this cheese bags, Becky. <laughs> oh, that does that does not sound good. Well, Becky, of... you let us you let us know if you like that nickname. Yo, cheese bags, Becky. Mm. How's it going? I could place a bet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try to think of something more flattering. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so yes, this is um, screenshots of a website that was up a few weeks ago with this sort of conspiracy theory. And then by the time we I mentioned it on the pod, it had been taken down. But like you said, Becky provided us with some screen caps, and so I'm going to read it. I'm not sure if I'll do an accent. I'll try it, and then we'll see. And so it's called, Could Benjamin Orr of the band The Cars... That's my... Hang on, I can't... <laughs> do it in right Thomas Baker's voice. <laughs> Oh, could Benjamin Orr of the band The Cars finally be proof of reincarnation? Productions in Beckington, England, Orr says he didn't know why he went there. The mysticism of the energy of The Cars band was a mesmerizing one. They intrigued the world not only with their talent, but with their magnetic, magical energy. The most interesting aspect of Benjamin Orr, I would say, is the illusion that he resonates as some type of reincarnated prince, a time-traveling royal soul seeking his mission and love on planet Earth. Not only does his performances... You have to excuse the grammar, that's not me. Not only does his performances prove my theories as being possible, but highly probable and unexplained. When Benjamin speaks, he speaks in a Western English dialect, yet when he sings, he sounds British. This is unmistakably a British accent, and a very deep one. <laughs> Could this finally prove reincarnation? Candio! <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> Could this finally prove reincarnation? How could one sing in an accent and dialect they know nothing of, unless it were embedded within their soul? Has this what? woman never heard of Mel Tillis? Oh, my I mean, goodness. Seriously. I'm talking in an accent right now that I know nothing about. And I'm doing just fine. Well, maybe not to how the about, English, but... <laughs> how, about, how about Jim Neighbors? Surprise, surprise, surprise. You see... Oh, great thou art. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Watch Benjamin as he answers the questions as to why he went to England. His eyes lit up as if he was wondering within himself, expressing that he was also mystified as to his journey to England. There is so many... <sighs> grammar is killing me. There is so many historic tales of Beckington, England, and the Gray families. Could the story of Benjamin Orr finally prove time travel and past lives exist? The woman that he chose to fall in love with was Diane Gray Page, perhaps a descendant of the Thomas Gray lineages near Beckington, England? But could this love story prove a theory of reincarnation of our past lives? Were we blessed with an a, a real angel... I've seen the pictures. Were we blessed with a real angel that found his soulmate friends in music and his love of a past life? <laughs> Visit blah, hey, blah, blah. Didn't Diane show us some pictures of her um, family from Beckington <laughs> in oh Boston? Gosh. Pretty sure she I believe, did. I believe you're right. Yeah. Wow. So here's my great, 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 great grandfather, grandfather <laughs> Thomas Gray. <laughs> Wow. Uh, they, well, and she didn't, unfortunately, I don't see the screenshots for, you know, her theories that uh, Benjamin was being made as a caveman and all of oh, the... I've got that one. Oh, do you? Oh, are you going to read that? Yeah. Okay, go. Fans fighting back. Is that our Benjamin or a caveman? <laughs> We've about had it with those jealous vandals of videos and photos. Fans are fighting back. Where are these fans that are fighting back? <laughs> well, there's one that wrote this, apparently. Yeah. Look and listen. Look and listen to watch they did. Um, I told you. Yeah, grammar. Look and listen to watch what they did to this video of Benjamin or the cars. The audio is messed up, and they photoshopped it. Frame by frame. <laughs> he looks like a hairy caveman in high heels. <laughs> I I don't even see where this woman's coming from. Oh, uh, no. Although you see the, the shadows or whatever, you know, on yeah. his face. Because the video is crummy. But it's not yeah. photoshopped frame by frame. Could you imagine? 
I, I've the got time? something to admit, Donna. Uh-oh. It's true confession time. Oh, boy. Spill it, Dave. It was, it was me. I <laughs> took the YouTube video, and I downloaded it, and I Photoshopped that bad boy frame by frame. Wow. Because I thought it would be funny to make Benjamin look like a caveman. Wow. I'm, I'm shocked. And I feel, I feel really bad about it now. Well, maybe you better come clean all the way around. You're the one who came up with the Sasquatch theory, aren't you? I did. It I was me. So. I thought it so. Bigfoot? Mm-hmm. Was, I think it was, not. It was me. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, you heard it here first on the Night Thoughts yeah. podcast. Yeah, it was me. Benjamin was reincarnated and Sasquatch is fake. Yeah. So do you have the one about the Ouija board? No, I, th- I only had those two. I don't know where the okay. rest of it is. So it goes on, which, by the way, I was I was in a in a teacher store yesterday with my daughter in law, and in the teacher store they were selling Ouija boards. What? Why? Are you serious? I want to go up and say why? Why? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, kids. <laughs> Let's Screw go. science today. We're going <laughs> to be connecting with demonic presences. Uh. All right, so it says the car song, Bye Bye Love, is derived from the Ouija board. My research into the band The Cars proves that Benjamin Orr was a time traveler reincarnated from the 16th, from, from the 16th century England. It sounds <laughs> the MTV. He sang <laughs> in a thick English accent, yet spoke in a Western American dialect with no accent. The band's writer, Rick Okasik's father, worked for NASA. Okay. Rick sought out Benjamin when Ben was with another band. I believe he was using witchcraft on Benjamin, extracting his angelic energy. Ugh. Visit my site. He, remember the Archies when Sabrina <laughs> the Witch and Reggie would always be getting on? This is how... Um, <laughs> This is how Elliot Easton was with the rest of the band concerning Rick. Rick's a witch, I tell ya! <laughs> He's a witch! <laughs> and then and, and Roy Thomas Baker was like um, the, the principal. I did not see that. I did not see that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. What, what was that guy's name? Mr. Something B. Mr. Whistle? I, no, I don't. I have no idea. Be something like that, yeah. All right. Weatherby, yeah, so, Weatherby. Yeah. Weatherby. Willoughby, Weatherby. <laughs> Willoughby, Help us Wallaby, out. woo. Yeah. All right, so uh, the, uh, last in our update, I just wanted to give a little... <laughs> just <laughs> I wanted to give a little update on the Dark Lord. Uh, oh, my gosh. And all the people who are on our Facebook page know that I, I posted his his rant Um but I just wanted, just wanted to give you a little update on the Dark Lord. You know, he was selling these these pins, and I I had su- suggested, hey, if you want to sell some more, you know, you got to bring down your price. And, and not knowing not who know- he was at the time. Not knowing who he was, and I found out he was the Dark Lord, and and um, I thought that was the end of it. And then he messaged me again. I didn't message him back. He messaged me back after after a time asking. Hey, if you're interested in you know buying so many of these, um, how many would you want, and what would you pay? And I just you know basically was saying, well, it depends on how many you got, and um, you know what the price per each would be. I mean, right. it's not up for me right. to say, but I I guess what the the deal was was that he didn't like that approach, and then he he wrote back. Um, to me, you know, why didn't you just give your pin to Donna? Because I, I, I told him that I wanted to ship it to you because I just wanted to, you know, give you one. Because once again, because you ended up buying yeah, another one, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, that's how I am. And so, why didn't you just give your pin to Donna and buy another one for yourself rather than try to be a air quotes straw buyer <laughs> or circumvent? <laughs> things here on ebay or try to broker a deal for others you haven't been straight with me dave okay hang on right there so what bothered me about that was because i think that he thinks that i asked you to buy it for me or something or like when he says broker a deal for others like like i'm going okay dave you know 
I think that the Dark Lord thinks that you were tr- that I w- came to you and said buy me a pin because I had a conflict with the Dark Lord in the past and he basically told me you know never contact me again after he blasted me out of nowhere and then of course he always plays the last card of like I'm gonna block you and we're done and you can't respond to me okay whatever but anyway so I'm thinking that he thinks you were that I was asking you to get me a pin but that wasn't the case yes. No, that wasn't the case. So um, he says, you haven't been straight with me. So then he, he goes into saying that he had a rift with you. Um, it was over. You're contacting him to collaborate on some cars or Ben or tribute or memorial and her being a, a pedant air quotes and being highly critical of the way air quotes, the legacy was written or authored. Um so blah 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 so anyway i he goes on to say how much he liked my graphics and blah 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 blah, blah. so i i sent back to him this simple message one i wasn't buying for donna it was a random act of kindness she did my mine in boston you should try it sometime not admiring my button but being kind um, two, I'm aware of your conflicts with many people in the Fanorama. As a matter of fact, a majority of the Fanorama knows what a pretentious jerk you are, but don't have the guts to call you out. True. And people, I'm telling you, if you're listening, you, you got to call jerks like this out. Um, three, I blocked you from the Night Thoughts page because of your behavior. See number two. <laughs> Four, I'm not surprised I'm blocked. See number two. <laughs> Five, you use quotes, air quotes, inappropriately. <laughs> C number two and six. Stop messaging me. C number two. So I'm guessing this was like I'm like his Neville Longbottom at this point, <laughs> right? And, and holy shit, when I cut the head off the snake, <laughs> he went he went from like Rhodes Scholar to back alley drag of society on oh. in about ten seconds flat. And and so he writes this thing back and, and he, he uses my shtick, which, you know, I didn't like it's. Oh, yeah. He's mimicking one. you. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Number two. See, number one. Number three. L.M.A.O. That you were called out Four. See, number one through three. Five. Cars fans are. And he uses a derogatory term and dweebs. And number six. C one through five. Well, well, I, you know, and that was like, what the fuck you know wh- what the hell yeah or are you writing something you know, writing so that's why i decided to post it's like you know people need to see what a what a jerk this guy is so after all this here's what happens this is the part i want to update everybody on well let me so, just say really quick that was like when i read his response to you that was like a few good men when tom cruise has jack nicholson on the stand and he's questioning questioning and then suddenly just pushes him too far and nicholson freaks that's what that reminded me of yeah (laughs) all right go ahead (laughs) never long bottom (laughs) (laughs) so so after i mean he was selling he was starting bid was 28 bucks with five dollar shipping okay that's that's the what I had purchased the pin for. He he canceled the the exchange, okay, um, which he shouldn't be able to do. But you know, I, I didn't I didn't press it. So then after all this, he puts it back up to thirty six bucks opening bid, five dollar shipping, <sighs> okay. Then he adds to the description of it ebay seller preferences for buyer requirements only allow a seller to block prospective buyers or bidders who have a feedback score of negative one or lower which i do not by the way that is not sufficient enough for this seller as a bidder can have a zero score or only have a few completed transactions or have a zero percent feedback rating on ebay i still don't know what he's talking about in bold, if you are a new eBay account or have an eBay feedback score of less than a positive 25, which I'm probably guessing, mine's all positive, but 
Maybe mine's less than 25, would be okay. my guess. <laughs> Um, blah, blah, blah. Please do not bid or make an offer. Buyer must contact seller to discuss eBay account history and status prior to placing a bid or making an offer. Ugh. Seller reserves the right to cancel any bid or cancel the transaction from any buyer, not deemed suitable or a high risk as determined when the, within the sole discretion of the seller. How is that even possible? No straw buyers. Oh, he misspelled straw. <laughs> No stall buyer or bidder. Seller will not ship to a, air quotes, gift address or other third party. So basically what he did was he went to have me blocked as a bidder. Per eBay policy, he couldn't do it. Oh. So he's putting in this disclaimer saying seller reserves the right to to do this. So I thought, wow, he typed all that for me. <laughs> You really got under his skin. Yeah. So here's the kicker. I checked um, on the pin pin status um, a couple days ago. Guess what the price is now? I have no clue. He's taken it down to buy it now, fifteen dollars uh. with ten dollars shipping. So we're within five dollars of the. Hey, you know what you ought to do? You ought to just sell them for twenty bucks with free shipping. Right. And you'd sell a lot more. So he's within five bucks of that. But his shipping is way overrated because he it's shouldn't charge more. If he charged the five dollars he should be charging, then it'd be twenty bucks. Right. Even and we, and he would you know it's that shipping it's going to throw him off and I'm like. Holy crap, you pretentious jerk. <laughs> what is wrong with him? Oh. I don't know what's wrong with him, but I haven't bid anymore, and I and I shall not bid. In. And this is this is the end of the Dark Lord and the eBay pin saga, but uh, I just thought it was so funny that we got within five bucks of what we what originally started the whole thing. Yeah, jeez <laughs> like, Louise. Holy crap. <laughs> well, and I just, for me, it's just the satisfaction of knowing that people are becoming aware of, you know, what's really behind that mask that he likes to screw into place. Yeah. Um, he's such a jerk. And his comment about his true feelings about Cars fans, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't get that at all. Yeah. I, I really don't get that at all. I don't get calling Cars fans the derogatory remark. Right. And I, and I definitely don't get calling them dweebs because he's a Cars fan. Yeah. Unless he's signaling himself out as a Benjamin Orr only fan. Probably. You know, every, everybody, I mean, why call yourself a dweeb? I, I don't get it. <laughs> well, if the shoe fits. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, uh, oh, I'm so, so done with him. Yeah. So that's that. That's the end of our saga. But once again, I reiterate, people, people, people. Everybody talks about people being, um, you know, being uh, harassed or people being nasty with them and, and so forth on Facebook. Um, if you don't call people out for it, nothing's going to change. Right. And that includes me. If you think I'm being mean and nasty, call me out. I don't have a prep talking about it. <laughs> oh, believe me, they'll email me about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but I have to, you know, I'm not that kind of person, though. It took me a really long time to work up the de the decision to even respond to that um, on our in our night thoughts group, as far as just even laying out some of the details of of why he and I had a falling out, which mm. I just tried to be very diplomatic, and this is what happened. But um, because generally, I just don't like conflict. I don't like, you know. So there's part of me that's like, okay, well, if I get burned, I'm done, and I'm so done, but I'm not going to necessarily go waving my flag about it, you know, unless, in this case, I mean, it, the atrocities just grow and grow with this guy. It's nuts. Yeah. Well, I am proud to say the Dark Lord of Ordor is dead! <laughs> <laughs> so did we find all the Horcruxes? Is that what we found? I think we have. <laughs> oh, my we gosh. Have. All, right. All right. So let's talk some Ocasics and classic Ocasics. Yeah. We're we're going um, 
through our it's kind of our album dissections uh, kind of thing. Uh, but we're going to be taking a look at Rick's solo efforts. We're going to do them about, you know, three at a time. And uh, this time we're going to be looking at uh, Beatitude or Beatitude. It's it's both because it's crazy like that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and this side of paradise and then his third effort fireballs up. Nice. So we are we are starting off with Beatitude or Beatitude. Yeah, I did hear that it's Beatitude. <laughs> it is Beatitude. No, see here's the here's the funny thing. Uh, he was on MTV when this came out. Okay. And I I think it was JJ Jackson who was interviewing him and he said Beatitude or is it Beatitude? And Rick said I something like oh, I suppose it could be both or something something of that Some, nature. Yeah, his usual. Maybe somebody can, can find that. Yeah, because Rick doesn't care what you call it. <laughs> you could call it the Rick Ocasek White Album. He wouldn't care as long as he knows you're talking about this one. But yeah, Beatitude was the the one that that I always thought it was, and um, I think it depends on on your on your background. Um, if you're um, you know come from a, a religious family and and knew about the Beatitudes, <laughs> you might have called it Beatitude. Even mm-hmm. though it doesn't have that, you know, um, extra, right uh, yeah. But um, yeah, it was always beatitude. Well, mm-hmm. and uh, and I actually read that it's beatitude after it's named after some sort of uh, beatnik poetry magazine that was out in the 1950s. Ah, huh. see, I didn't know that. There you go. I did a little research. There you go. <laughs> Just a well, on the, on the personal side, this is the one. Cars and or Rick Solo or any any band member solo that I did not purchase first myself, if you can believe that. I had no clue it was coming out when it came out. Oh, okay. And uh, at the time, I was living with my older brother, and he, he came home and said, he put, put a cassette in, he goes, guess who this is? And he started playing something to grab for. Okay. And of course, I recognized. I was like, oh, "Car's got a new album out." No, it's, it's, it's Rick Ocasek, as my brother said. It's Rick <laughs> Ocasek. I'm like, "No way!" And so, um, I basically stole that cassette from my brother, <laughs> <laughs> and then you know went out and got my my own and. And from, you know, there it's history. But, yeah, this yeah. one, I had no idea this was coming out. Yeah. Uh, this is also the first time I ever saw Rico Ocasek without sunglasses on. Oh, really? Which totally freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> he has eyes. He has eyes. They yeah. actually look like very evil eyes, too. Yes, very evil. No wonder you were freaked out. Yeah, no kidding. So, with... With uh, Beatitude, he has um, lots of different musicians. Yes. And the the key to actually telling who played on what is really complicated. I mean, <laughs> it's it's not complicated in theory, but it's complicated in the way they set it up. Because, it's annoying. Yeah, each song has its own little weird symbol, and... Now that I'm older and we're bifocals, it's even yeah more annoying. But so like Jimmy, Jimmy, it looks like a spider <laughs> symbol right. next to it. And so what they do is at the end they've got all the uh, people who were um, on the album, and then they have those symbols next to the person's names to show what songs they played on. <laughs> so it's like ugh. Yeah. So, so if you want to see like you know for example. Greg is on this mm-hmm. playing keyboards and then they show, you know, what song. So I'd have to look at the symbols, match up the symbol with the song to figure out what songs he played on. Yeah. And uh, honestly, I don't even have the energy to uh, do it for this podcast. i tell you <laughs> well, what songs Greg played on. But um, the musicians that played on here, obviously, Rick, he's got his, he plays guitar and keyboards. Jewel Shear, which people might know from, uh, working with Elliot, mm-hmm. um, Steve 
oh, I have a hard time pronouncing his last name, Cat, Cat, Cataldo? Cataldo. Cataldo. Antonio de Porta. Antonio de Porta. <laughs> <laughs> vocals um, Roger Greenwalt Casey Lindstrom guitar Fuzby Morris which we of course heard before and what else is Fuzby known for? Fuzby was in Richard and the Rabbits Richard and the Rabbits yeah guitar and keyboards um, Greg Hawks keyboards Stephen Haig keyboards uh, Akio Akashi and Daryl Jennifer bass Derek Dyer, saxophone, Stephen George, and Miss Lynn. Air quotes on drums. <laughs> yeah, he has so, quite a roster on here. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I know when I first got this album, my interest was, hey, what cars were playing on this? And, you know, Greg is pretty much stuck with Rick on, on a lot of his solo albums. And I think mm-hmm. it just depends on timing and so forth or whether Rick was doing just kind of an independent thing um, or not. But yeah, Greg's Greg's on this one. Mm-hmm. I know some people have said they thought Elliot um, is on this one and, and he's not. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I know, Donna, that you've come late to the Rick solo party. Yes. And you went about getting all of his solo CDs and you know, I've got such a long standing history with this album that, you know, obviously my impressions are going to be different than yours. But with, just what's your overall impression? What is um, songs that you think are, are like car songs or could pass as car songs? And what personal favorites do you have on this album? Yikes. Um, OK, let's start with a general feeling of the album. What well, do you get? Okay, so you're right. I came late to the party, and part of it is because I have grown to love Rick's voice on the Cars albums, but in general, his voice is, is just not my favorite. And when you have it offset with Ben and the background vocals, although they have varied through the Cars albums, but you've got you know you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on that works perfectly on the Cars albums. Rick by himself, um, I just have a hard time staying staying on board for long periods of time. So without something to break up the album, it's really difficult. It's not, I shouldn't say it's really difficult. It's just not, it's just not my favorite to listen to him for long periods of time. Having said that, um, the album is, I think the album is pretty good. It's very 80s. It came out in 1982. And so it's, it's very much where they were. I mean, you can see that that's where Rick was at. Definitely between Shake It Up and then Heartbeat City came after this. It's it's just it's all very Rick. It's it's very much him, but without the polish and the the intricacy of the cars. Yeah, you know? very experimental. Yes. Uh, for Rick. Well. I didn't feel like it was experimental as much as like he had the freedom to do cooks. Okay. So you know how in the cars he brings a demo and then they all sort of would sit around and add to it and talk about it and flesh Mm -hmm. it out together. Well, there was no one to seemingly no one to really do that with him on this album. So it was all Rick driven. In fact, he's the producer of this album, right? Yes. Yes. Um, So it's all, it's, it's pure Rick without those special influences of the four other guys. Although, you know, Greg's in here a little bit, he's got three songs. So, um, to me, it wasn't experimental as much as just sort of a, you know, pulling the, pulling the sheet off of the full Rick experience. And this is, you know, this is what Rick by himself wants to do. Um, very synth heavy, um, very quirky, He uses a lot of that sort of talking, quirky voice kind of thing that is sort of his signature. Um, So, you know, I did like this. This album took me the longest to to enjoy of the three that we're doing today. Um, But I did like um, something to grab for. And when I didn't first listen to it, I didn't think I would like it. Like I didn't like it at first, but then I kept 
finding myself humming it or singing it later. So then I was like, <laughs> oh, I guess I do like that one because it's stuck in my head. Um, I like Connect Up To Me. It's pretty good, except for that odd drum beat thing that gets off track there in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there, There's an extended version of Connect Up To Me, too. Yeah, I, re- I did read that. Um, so, I mean, I just I have notes on some of the other songs. As far as the ones I really liked would probably be something to grab for, for sure. And Connect Up To Me was pretty good. So what, out of those songs, what songs do you think are very Cars-like? Because this is always a thing. You know, Rick has always said, I've never written a song um, specifically for the Cars or for Solo. Um, and, and I still think, you know, there's some songs that I just, I don't think you can say that with. I think there's songs that he knew that, oh, this is my solo album. Boom, I'm going with it. You know? Yeah. And I think this this album says it the most of all, out of all of the solo albums. Um, but what what songs do you, do you think could be on a Cars album? Um, it's tough for me to answer that because I wasn't really thinking about that when I was listening to it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a. Well, something to grab for, I think definitely could be. Um, interesting. They would play Jimmy Jimmy live in concert. Yeah. During which... Heartbeat City, which I wouldn't have chosen that one. I would have, um, I would have picked something to grab for. If you're going to do a a Rick solo, yeah, song, the the Jimmy Jimmy does have more um, so it's the precursor to Heartbeat City type mm-hmm. sounds and noises in it, um, and, and I mean just my Jimmy Jimmy, if we could just talk about that for just a second, um, you're right they played it um, on their eighty four eighty five tour, and I, I I think I'm prejudiced against Jimmy Jimmy because. That just annoys me. Elliot had a solo album out or coming out. You know, Ben had stuff coming out. Later, there was no like, oh, maybe we should do, you know, a couple songs from this album, a couple songs from that album, da 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 da. Yeah. Rick's the only one who had a solo song played by the cars. And that just annoys me. Although they would play um, Niagara Falls before the concerts. Well, that's not officially part of the concert. That's just no, when the crowd's milling it. You know, like, yeah. and that was Greg. You know, like, the the more I think about logistically Rick's, Rick's um, solo albums, obviously he and Greg had such a strong connection and such a similar mindset about music because Rick used him so much, um, and I'm sure Greg loved it. I mean, it's a very happy, seems to be a very happy working relationship. But, you know, you kind of can also get the feeling that, you know, Greg was kind of a favorite. And so, yeah, he's going to play Niagara Falls. But no no, no future considerations for Elliot or, or Ben. Yeah. You know? it's, it's, I, I agree. And I think that if, if you played Jimmy Jimmy during the Heartbeat City tour, that um, their tour for Door to Door, you know, you had, you know, three other band members with solo albums out and everyone, you know, should have had um, uh, one song plugged in there. At least, especially, yeah. especially Benjamin and Elliot. Yeah. With with lead vocals. Um, but, you know, I don't you know, I don't know how much of that is band politics. I don't know much how much of that is um, the singers not wanting to do it. I can see Elliot not wanting to do it. Um mm. Yeah. Benjamin, I, I, that one I don't understand. Yeah. He could have definitely plugged in a, a song from the Lace during the '87 tour. Yeah, I agree. And I agree. Yeah. Um, but uh, as as far as this album, something to grab for, to me is the is the only song that really reminds me a lot of the Cars. But I I enjoy this album for what it is and. You know, you talk about the background vocals and there's, you know, Rick throughout his solo albums goes back and forth between background, having background vocals, not background vocals. And this one, he, he doesn't, right. um, although they say they do, but not strong 
you know, ones that you can notice. And, but what makes up for that is, are all these different sounds and the, the, the rhythm being, uh, and me- I'm sorry, melody being taken over by these little, you know, keyboard parts and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's what I, you know, like, I mean, and all the songs I, I like, um, as far as favorites go, um, I, I like the, the songs that are a little bit softer, um, in, in lyrical content, like prove and I can't wait and connect up to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also like the ones that are just darker that I think they're, that are too dark to be on a cars album, like a quick one out of control time bomb. Yeah. Uh, the guitar solo in time bomb is the bomb. It it is the bomb. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> but I can remember um, listening to um, a Rick live in 1997, mm-hmm. and there's a guy in the crowd going, "Hey, Rick, how about a quick one? Rick, how about a quick one?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, play the freaking song, Rick. We love this song, you know. <laughs> Gandio. And there's, there's one yeah. in every crowd, isn't there? Exactly. <laughs> so you know, I, I I enjoy this album for what it is, and and as um, it, it's kind of similar to me as the Panorama album was with the Cars, was that it wasn't my favorite, but as time goes on and you listen to it with older ears, mm-hmm. and also listen to it with earbuds in, mm-hmm. and you realize all that went into it. You know, you appreciate it more. You like it more. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I dig a lot of these songs on this CD. Hmm. Yeah, and like I said, I when I first had my first couple runs run throughs, I was like, oh, I'm not going to like this album very much at all. And then it, it does tend to sort of you know get under your skin a little bit and just hook onto you. You know, I just they they do get stuck in my head. Um, on the song "Out of Control." Uh. To me, it's one that it's kind of a droner. There's a few of these different songs that just kind of go on and on. Um, but it got me thinking, like, moving in stereo technically should kind of be a droner to me, but it's so not. Like, what is the difference in my, my mind? Because, like, when I was listening to Out of Control, it's like, okay, this is just very repetitive. It goes on for far too long. It's like Drag On Forever. It's like Fine Line. It's in that category for me. But then I was like, you know what? Moving in stereo is the same sound over and over mm-hmm. with very few lyrics. And those lyrics are over and over. You know, like. Yeah. So why? What's the difference? Moving in stereo rocks and it does not drag. But this one, I, you know, and, and these others, I just am like, oh, be done. End it already. I, I think moving in stereo rocks. A lot more than out of control. Yeah, it's definitely more. But, but I, I got it. I have to give kudos to Rick. I don't know how many songs he's done it in, but I always loved out of control because he used the word flucked. F L U C K E D. I did notice and, that, yeah. And <laughs> when I when this album came out, I was like, oh no, he did not say fucked. <laughs> Someday you'll be sorry when you fucked around and waited. And I looked at the liner notes like. Flucked. Oh, oh, that genius. <laughs> He's a fucking genius. <laughs> Slow clap. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. And he's um, he does it uh, again on another solo album that I can think of offhand. Yeah, I think that's very smart. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, and speaking of lyrics, one thing I noticed throughout these three that we're doing this week, you, he likes his, he has certain phrases and stuff that he likes that pop up here and there. And on this album, and Take a Walk, he says, Under the Cold and Darkly Sky. He loves that. Uh, he's used it like three three I, times? I bet he uses, yeah, three times. I um, He he probably uses it in everyday conversation. He probably does. Hey, honey, I'm just going to go take a walk in the cold and darkly sky. <laughs> I'll be back later. Sweetie, do you really think you should go out tonight? It's kind of a cold and darkly sky out there. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Not going to let old cold and darkly sky stop me. Soccer game was canceled. They didn't want to play under the cold and darkly sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to call it. We got to call it. Get the boys off the field. 
Getting cold and darkly out here. (laughs) Plenty of everyday uses for that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and I was wondering if on Take a Walk, if he was the one, he must have been the one playing the keyboards because there was no little symbol by Greg or the other keyboard person yeah. for that song. So, which is why, why it reminded me of, loop. Huh, yeah, I was going to say, it reminded me of his little demos that we've, that have been recently released that are like, you know, oh, okay. That's, that's kind of where I have the idea of, this is, it's very similar to what he probably would have brought the band before they added a bunch of layers to it. Yeah, it's right. And this album is very thin mm-hmm. when it when it comes um, to some of these songs. But uh, you know, I still it's it's good solid good solid CD, and you can still get it at a reasonable price. Well, there you have it. Was Jimmy Jimmy released as a single? Do you uh, remember it radio play? I don't remember Jimmy. I remember Jimmy Jimmy the video. But as far as radio airplay, something to grab for. I got radio airplay here in the Midwest. I know that. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, and we've already mentioned it was 1982. It was recorded at Synchro. Yes. Um, which is very cool. Um, and Elliot Roberts was his manager. Yes. Which makes sense. <laughs> Are you high? Where'd you get that, you get that coat? <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So you've got Shake It Up coming out in 81. Rick puts out uh, his solo, the solo CD in 82. Mm-hmm. Greg puts out Niagara Falls in 83. Okay. Um, Elliot basically has um, Change No Change done, although he hasn't released it yet and won't until 85, but Heartbeat City in 84. Mm hmm. Okay, yep. so Elliot releases Change No Change 85, and then 1986, you've got Rick releasing This Side of Paradise, mm-hmm. and Benjamin releasing The Lace. Yes. At the same time, seen a lot of old ads where they're, you know, advertising them both. Yeah, I think um, The Lace came out in October, and This Side of Paradise came out in December. Yeah. So they're pretty close. Um. And I can remember Rick being on MTV as a guest VJ and him um, not only saying, have a dream, have a wet dream, him (laughs) saying, um, playing Benjamin's um, song and introducing it. Yeah, I kind of remember seeing that snippet. Yeah. Stay of the night, obviously. Not too hard to stop. (laughs) Sorry. But this side of paradise uh, has a special place in my heart. Okay. It is it is not my favorite Rick solo CD, amazingly, um, but it has a place in my heart because it came out while I was in college. It, it got a lot of play from me on my Sony Walkman, <laughs> walking back and forth to campus. So that's what I always think about. Um, and, and I can still see the visuals in my head today that I was having in my head, um, then, awesome. which is really, really cool. Yeah. But this, I, I would say that this album is probably, but I, I haven't looked up the facts, but is probably the most successful Rick solo album. Yes. Um, it got, got the most radio airplay, um, you know, because of a, a couple of songs, and mm-hmm. it certainly has one of the best lineups as far as musicians and, and vocals. Yes. So I'm going down the list here, and no no, no crazy uh, symbols this time. Thank you. Uh, Rick plays uh, bass, guitar, and keyboards on here. Steve Stevens plays guitar. Tom Verlaine plays guitar in Pink Flag Joe. Uh, Sandy McLeland McLeland does background vocals. Elliot Easton. Wasn't he with... (laughs) He plays guitar. Uh, Greg Hawks, bass, keyboards, and background vocals. Chris Hughes on drums. Tony Levin, stick bass. Benjamin Orr, Background vocals. Roland or- 
or Zabal. That sounds like that. That could have been Benjamin's name before he changes to or. <laughs> That's his brother. Yeah. Guitar and background vocals. And then G.E. Smith, mm. uh, which people will know from Hall & Oates and also from the Saturday Night Live band. Yeah, yeah. On guitar. Yes. So we've got, um, you know, a lot more cars. Yes. On solo um, CD. And, and it's coming after Heartbeat City. And so like you were saying, you know, certain songs are this precursor to heartbeat city i kind of look at this album as it's still bringing a lot of the heartbeat city yes feel to it very much like i feel like what like he learned a bunch of stuff from mutt and then incorporated it excuse me robert john mutt lang (laughs) and then he incorporated that with you know if you compare it to beatitude plus robert john mutt lang equals this side of paradise how i look at it yes and this like i said this album was obviously um a lot more popular more successful than than any of his other solo albums simply because he he got radio airplay with emotion in motion yes um he got radio airplay with true to you and he got video airplay on both of those on mtv um and but and he he also did a video for Keep on Laughing, but I don't ever remember it getting airplay getting much. Hmm. on video airplay or or radio airplay. Um, the as far as this album, my overall feel of this album is just it's a continuation of Heartbeat City. Mm-hmm. Um, it it has you know so, some things that are are a little different, but I and enjoy this album quite a bit for for what it is mm-hmm. um it, this is, it probably could be a lot of people's favorite rick solo cd yeah. i would think um there's an extra boost to me anyway it's an extra boost about this album is you mentioned steve stevens on guitar and he's a hugely famous he played for billy idol um but also i mean he has a he has quite a long roster himself and then um is it chris hughes he he produced like tears for fears and Mm -hmm. um i mean so there's a couple of heavy hitters a little more on this album um than certainly than with beatitude i think although i hope i'm not offending anybody i i didn't recognize really um any of the names on the beatitude roster in terms of them being huge hit makers outside of, although I know Fesby Morse yeah. is incredibly talented and very diverse um, and, and quite accomplished. So I don't mean to slight anybody on the Vitatude album, but this one, particularly in this middle eighties, you've got some, you've got some big names coming in on this album as well. The, the, the thing about Steve Stevens is it surprises me. Well, first of all, it's very apparent on the song I'm coming for you. That that's Steve Stevens with that <laughs> that raunchy mm. uh, solo, but mm-hmm. it surprises me about "Keep on Laughing." It seems like kind of a tame song to put him on, mm. um, but uh, you know, hey. Yeah, let's see. So, not only did Rick have um, Chris Hughes producing for him, he also had Ross Cullum. I don't know, um, I don't know much about Ross, but. Um, so now Rick Scott, he's collaborating more. It's not just him in the producer's chair, so he's collaborating a little bit more. So he's recorded Electric Lady. So, um, you know, he went away from home to work on it instead of doing it at Synchro. Um, and I was curious about, I wonder, you know, again, just like how do all these things play out? Because he's got Greg on bass. Yeah. Did Ben not want to do bass? Did he, Was Ben not asked to do bass? Was Ben, ben was busy with... Um, the lace so yeah know, maybe it was just a timing thing or whatever but i just wonder about things like that because um because i think greg plays the bass on the whole thing on every song even the one where they've got the additional bass guy greg's still credited with uh-huh. bass, i think so that was that was curious um but then yes you know benjamin on the background vocals <laughs> so distinctive yes you can't and that, you can't not and- hear it this this album, unlike Beatitude, uses background vocals, mm-hmm. um, and not only just background vocals, but the background vocals of right. Greg and Benjamin, 
which are so distinctive. Mm -hmm. Um, And and it's, you know, it's it makes the songs better. Yeah. But then I wondered why. Why no Ben on Emotion Emotion? Yeah, I don't know. I know. It's just see, I just I really needed to be I needed to be a circus mouse in Rick's pocket. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anyway. Yeah, so very heartbeat city ish stuff. We already talked about that. Um, oh, so, and my other curious thing was, um, I wonder why I know David Robinson. Yes, let's ask Benjamin on a radio show. Why I know David Robinson? <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, that's, a, that's a shout out for you, Craig. Um, <laughs> and uh, what would he say? It's a, uh, I don't know. I love when he gets taken off guard like that. Yeah. Because he, he starts with, because, you know, I feel like he always wants to answer everybody's questions really well, <laughs> but he's not great with words. And so then he, but that one, he's like, well, it was, just, uh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and that was the question of the time. You know, I think hey, they got everybody on here except David Robinson. But um, as far as songs that you feel could be on, Cars albums. What oh, songs? See, I don't know. I didn't think of it that way. Um, well, again, Keep on Laughing is very Heartbeat City. I mean, it starts out sounding like Heartbeat City. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I definitely felt like that could have been a song that they had on there and scrapped. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I really liked um, PFJ. Um I could see that on the cars. On what about "True to You"? That's and that's that's the song where everybody's on. I guess so, like door to door or something, because it's just when I think of songs that could be on Cars albums, I always think of the first three albums. So later they moved into sort of, huh? No, I mean "True to True to You" could have been on Heartbeat City, easy. It even uses the same sounds. I guess so. Wow. It's amazing we're not hearing the same thing. Well, I mean, yes, but I guess, you know, I, I don't know. It's not my you're, favorite you're song. You're blowing my mind, Donna. I, you're blowing my no. mind. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yes, you're right. You're right, Dave. Well, I mean, you've got all these guys on this one song. you got the background vocals. you got Elliot doing a solo. Well, I recognize they're all there. And yeah, I, and, it's, and I hear it's yes, cars-like. but I would put it on like door to door. So it's very cars like. Well, if you're thinking door to door cars, yes. Yes. It's not it's debut cars. cars. It's not panorama cars. Well, no, but it's cars. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Splitting hairs today, folks. All right. Well, again, I just didn't. I wasn't thinking of any of the songs that way. I, I recognized a lot of similarities, but I wouldn't have thought could this have been on a Cars album? I just think, oh, that's kind of like the Cars. That's kind of yeah. like the Cars. And just telling myself, well, of course it is, because Rick, you know, is the principal songwriter for the Cars, and he's the principal mm-hmm. songwriter. So yes, it's all. It's going to be very similar. Um, so Benjamin does background vocals on True to You. He does them. Um, on Look in Your Eyes, mm-hmm. which is very distinctive there, and True Love. Yes, which I, the True Love ones to me are a little, they're definitely Mutt Lang-ish. They're kind of washed out a little bit mm-hmm. and not quite as, doesn't quite pack the Benjamin punch as the other two, but. Yeah, well, Benjamin, you know, with him saying eyes, you know. <laughs> um, do you think that Emotion in Motion could have been about Paulina? Have we talked about this before? You know, Rick has always said he's never written a song for Paulina. Paulina said she's never written a song. And, and I'll be bringing this up uh, more a little bit later. I think that's bullshit. It's got to be. Because, because Emotion in Motion, if, if it isn't about Paulina, shame on you, Rick Ocasek, for not making it about Paulina. Well, or about your wife. <laughs> well, so. yeah. Because, and that's why oh, I think it was. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it can't be. Don't mean to be picky, yeah. but. Maybe he could say that it was about Pauline at that point in time. Um, I don't know if he was divorced from his wife in 86 or not. I don't. For some I reason, think, I think they got divorced. And Pauline in, got married in 89. Right. And I was in, thinking that he and, uh, but I, yeah, I don't know. I thought they got divorced in 88. In 87, when they were talking about door-to-door coming up, him and Paulina were 
um, out, so to speak. Okay. So, so it's maybe it was, yeah. maybe they were he, separated by that point. Yeah, maybe they were separated, whatever. But yeah, it should be. And this, the emotion in motion, um, you know, with its radio airplay, mm-hmm. and this is the one song that, you know, a lot of people know. Mm-hmm. I can remember a college buddy of mine singing it to his girlfriend. Aww. And her saying, stop it. <laughs> Late sweet. on the radio. We're going down the highway, yeah. Um, oh, it wasn't on a stage or like at their wedding or something? No. Oh. We were going down. He was driving, and I was in the back seat, and it came on the radio, and he starts singing it to her. And oh. it was just so annoyingly irritating. And. <laughs> 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 Well, one of the things I love about this song, of course, Emotion Motion, is because I love that he's singing more than talking. Um, I always appreciate when he does that. Because, you know, we've talked about this before, I know. If you look, listen back to the Ocasek and Orr stuff, um, you know, even Milkwood, he, he really has a great singing voice. Um, and so I like when he uses it. Um, the video, of course, was awesome. He is badass. He is Game <laughs> of Thrones badass. That's right. <laughs> with his um, little with his little friend. His little sidekick, yeah. I think that's Greg, by the way. Oh! <laughs> Greg. It might be. You know, Greg was really involved in all of Rick's he projects. He was. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That'd be so funny to make like a gif of, or gif if you're one of those people, uh, a gif of... Rick walking along with a little guy behind him and then tag Greg in it on Facebook. Greg, is that you? Oh, my gosh. No. Greg would think that's funny. Come on. Yes. He's been on the pod. He has an amazing he knows sense how, of humor. He knows how we work. <laughs> yes. But you know you'd offend someone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. I would. Um, I do want to also give a shout out to Kirk Johnston at this point because he did an amazing cover of Emotion in Motion on his Full Circle LP yes, and it is glorious. Mm-hmm. So I I like that version a lot too. Yeah. So as far as this uh, album, what are your favorites on this album? Well, emotion, emotion, mm-hmm. really is is uh, where it's at. But of course, I like True to You. Um, and uh, so I have the Rick trifecta. Ooh. Keep on laughing, True to You, and Emotion, Emotion. Three nice. great songs. Nice. Back to back to back. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. I liked PFJ, like I said. Um, although, uh, he did use the little, felt the pressure, <laughs> which is from Heartbeat City. Yeah. For sure. Like, not even like trying to cover up that that was a Heartbeat City thing, you know, because it's exactly the same. Yeah. Um, which I thought was really cute. But you know what I missed in PFJ? Greg is listed as playing the harmonica. I don't hear any harmonica in there. I hear the clarinet. Uh, He's playing the clarinet. I hear some sort of I, dolphin noises, but I don't hear harmonica. You know, I can't. I don't think it's pronounced if it is. Yeah, it's it's the secret harmonica. Yeah. I was so excited to to hear Greg play the harmonica, but mm. no luck. No luck. Um. I thought that okay, so. Looking at my notes, when you ask me what could have been on Cars albums, I guess, um, well, This Side of Paradise sounds a lot like A Dream Away to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Hello Darkness actually has some of the, sounds like some of the You Are the Girl keyboards yeah. in there. Yeah. So there's some this Side noise. of Paradise is such a cool song. I've always loved that song. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's one of my favorites on this album. And I also love how at the end of it, it goes back into like an instrumental of true yeah. love. Yeah. And so it, at pretty. first I thought it was a hidden track, um, which Rick has used mm-hmm. in, in other solo LPs, but, um, but it's not, it's, it's actually, um, it's, it's part of the, this side of paradise track. Um, but it's such a, such a cool song. And I, I just love how the, the drums kind of drive this song mm. along with it. Boom, pa pa pa, pa 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 pa. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's awesome. It's a good song to if you're driving into a city. Ah. 
good song. Nice. Uh, True Love, going back to True Love. I love the acoustic. Yes. In there. That was a nice touch. A really nice touch. And that's Steve Stevens again. So I thought that was nice. And also, oh, I wanted to point out that you kind of went through the, the timeline there. Um, in October of 1985, the Cars released the Cars' greatest hits, which included a, a new song, which was Tonight She Comes. Mm-hmm. And Rick has said in interviews before that Tonight She Comes was a song he was originally planning to use for this side of paradise, but then did not. And he was, at the time that they recorded Tonight She Comes, he was working on his, on this solo album. So he, um, so the two points that I took away from that were, um, one, that was a really awesome song for him to give to the cars because mm-hmm. it was in fact one of their greatest hits. And, um, but then also that he worked on that solo album for a long time because it didn't come out until December of 86, and yet they would have been working on that song probably the summer or early fall of 85. So he was working on that for a long time. Well, Rick never rushes anything. No, no. Mm -mm. Speaking of which, we still have those that summer release he was talking about. I know, I know. Well, don't need to tell you I told you so. It's officially, well, it hasn't been summer very long. June 21st is the date, first day of summer. Yeah. He's all right. Okay. (laughs) All right. Come on, Rick. (laughs) And any other thoughts about this side of paradise? Um, no, it was good. I liked it. I liked it was easier for me to like this album than it was Beatitude on first listening. Um so no, I like it. It's good. And I I think you can still find this I think it's probably still produced. I don't think it's out of print. It may be. Um Hey, I hear you typing. No, that was me turning. I was turning my pages. Oh, I hear you turning <laughs> pages. Yes, well. Um, you definitely can find it, you know, on iTunes and so forth. But as far as you CD people, um, I don't know. I'm just taking a quick look on Amazon here. Well, while you do that, I will say, too, on my um, Facebook page, which is called Benjamin Orr colon Sweet Purple June, I have uploaded Rick's appearance on Saturday Night Live from... It must have been 86. Where it he was? Performed, yeah, he performed Keep on Laughing and Emotion in Motion, right? Yeah. And then he also was in um, a couple of skits. He was in the Church Lady Church Chat yes. skit and also the opening skit. So I uploaded those. Yes, and that was, those. that was, I was in college, <laughs> and that was the um, Game 6 of the World Series night, and the game went long. That was the famous um, ball through the legs of uh, Buckner game. Oh, and yes, they ended yes. up not showing it that night, but recording it and showing it the next week or something like that. I was so pissed because, you know, I waited out this game. The game went past, you know, 1030, which is when Saturday Night Live starts in my neck of the woods. Oh. And then, of course, you had to have the news, and then it – um it didn't materialize, and I was waiting up to watch, to watch Rick. But it was worth it seeing it on tape. Oh yeah, good, good. Well, if you need to see it again, you can see it on my page. There you go. Um, yeah, you can you can still find this side of Paradise for under ten bucks. Nice. Okay, so we've got this side of Paradise in '86, door to door in '87, cars break up. Yes. Nothing for a long time. <laughs> Nothing for a long time. Um, then in 1991, Rick puts out his Fireball Zone album. Yes. Which features awesome cover art by Paulina. Yes. Which I, I have always loved. Um, and I, of course, initially recognized the photo that it's derived from as coming off the Door to Door album. Oh, nice. Um, but it was cool because once I began Twittering <laughs> and, <laughs> and was able to connect with Paulina, I found out that that um, she did that using an early form of Photoshop. Oh, nice. 
which is even more cool that yes. it's uh, a digital creation and so forth. Yes. Love it. And I will go on to say this is my favorite Rick solo CD. Of all of them or the ones we're doing this week? Of, of all of them. Oh, okay. Which is really weird. It may, it may not be that way in two years, but this is <laughs> a long time coming. This has been my my go-to. And I, I can't really put my finger on it. I have like I was thinking about it this week as to why. And, I, you know, I've got a few ideas what it could possibly be. But um, but as, as far as people who are on this album, Rick takes care of guitar, keyboards, Nile Rodgers. This album was produced by Nile Rodgers. That's one of the reasons why I really uh, like this album. Um, Larry Mitchell, lead guitar. Dan Huff, guitar on balance and Mr. Meaner. Steve Elson, horns. Don't know what kind of horns. Just horns. <laughs> Could be cow horns. Could be a whole mix of horns. Yeah. Stan Harrison, horns. More horns. Because Steve can't play all the horns. Got to have Stan. <laughs> Matt, Matt Co- Colohan, horns. Holy shit, there's a lot of horns. <laughs> um, Richard Hilton, keyboards. Al Berry, bass guitar. Larry Aberman, drums. Nikki Curry, drums on balance and misdemeanor. Tawatha, I'm going to say A.G., backing vocals. Um, another reason why I love this album are the female backing vocals mm-hmm. of Tawatha A.G. Um, Fonzie Thornton, <laughs> hey! backing vocals. Curtis King Jr., backing vocals. Dennis Collins, backing vocals. Nice. All right. So uh, I'll go back to you. What's your overall thoughts of Fire Balsa? Okay, well, I do want to say that Niall Rogers producing this album gives it a whole nother stratosphere of, of sound, of attitude, of everything. I mean, you, you can tell. I mean, if you didn't know Niall Rogers had produced this, you might, and you started listening to it, you might ask yourself, who produced it? Was that Niall Rogers? It could be because it's so his his touch on stuff is so distinctive, in my opinion. And so you, I just hear him through this whole thing. Um, I really like this album a lot. It's very different to me. It's very different than the first two. And um, it's funky. It's more guitar driven it has those background vocals like you said i mean they're like um they're like like the choir up in Mm -hmm. the you know what i mean like you just picture this they're just so full and so thick um they're awesome and then you've got the horns a lot less keyboard driven but then you've got these horns kind of replacing and adding the brassy sound and the funk and it's just so different to me. It's so, so different. So don't even ask me what I think could be on a Cars album, because none. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> none of them. Maybe, maybe Rockaway. Maybe. Yes, maybe Rockaway. But. And that's it. Which is a great opening song. Yes. I'm having listened. And the video it, is so awesome. We'll have to post these videos. I don't even think I've seen this one. Oh, my gosh. You've got to see it. One, it's really long hair, Rick. Oh, okay. Ooh. It is. It is. It is. Rick kind of dancing. Rick. Ooh, double <laughs> and threat. I just love the way it's shot and the whole bit. But this, the, the the song "Rockaway" gets me moving. Oh yeah. It is a workout song. It's, it's great. I just I love it. And and I, the the thing about this album is one, you know, I was in mourning at the point in time this came out. My yeah. my beloved cars were gone they had broken up mm-hmm. my little brother's like hey, the cars <laughs> broke up <laughs> and so boom along this album comes and i was like oh man great you know mm-hmm. and the the that and the the production and mm-hmm. the 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 background vocals in it, um, it, it being so different, it, it being powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I and there's just so many songs on this that I like. Yeah. And th- 
the other component to it is there's songs on here that I think just really kind of touch my heart as far as them either being romantic or just things you need to think about. Mm. All we need is love. Great song. Mm. And hey, Rico Kasich reggae kick ass. <sighs> Okay. Um, the way the way you look tonight. The way you look tonight is beautiful. If that isn't about Paulina, then I'm pissed. That exactly, exactly. I'm that has to be about Rick Ocasek. That song better be about Paulina. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Over and over, better be about Paulina. <laughs> Flowers of evil, not about. <laughs> Um, well, you mentioned All We Need Is Love, and I have to tell you, on my notes next to that song, I wrote Yawn. Really? Yeah. Okay, first oh, of all, come, come on, on man. come on. First of all, the title, The I mean, it's so, it, to me, that's like, okay, Rick, too far, too far out of the box. Come back. It sounds like Michael Bolton in Time, Love, and Tenderness. It's got the, you know, people in the in the choir swaying in the the pit at church and he's got the I don't know the stereotypical lyrics and I just didn't like it the, yeah the, the little reggae drum thing yeah I think it's awesome no that just didn't work for me that was like okay Rick that's not you it's like you know what it's the equivalent of the song door to door on door to door like no nope you Too just far. don't think it fits huh no it's just not it's it's not a good fit for him hmm. it's not a good fit for him but I will say again, he's he's so much more singing on this album than talking. I love that. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think that The Way You Look Tonight is such a beautiful, soulful song. Um, Have you seen the video? No, there's a video. Yeah. And um, I can't remember the model's, the model's name that he's, he, that is the, the object of his affections in the video, but okay. Paulina makes a cameo in it, which ah. is real. Oh, are they sitting in a diner? Yes, it's black, yeah. it's black and white. Yeah. Yeah. I have seen that, but I've only seen it once, and it was recently. I wonder why I saw that. Yeah. Hmm. Good video. Yeah, Good nice. Video. Nice. Yeah, but I didn't like uh, All We Need Is Love. Uh, I kind of liked the chorus and over and over, but... You know, that was the droner on the list as far as I was concerned. Mm. Um, the Well, when I was going to say Rockaway, great opener. And then to follow with The Way You Look Tonight was a great a great one, too, I thought. I really yeah. liked that. Um, now, the song Come Back, that's another one that could possibly be on a, on a Cars album, too. Okay. Um, cause it, and he's using that that chunking pattern or whatever on the guitar um so you know that one kind of reminds me of of a car's influence but um the but most of it's just funky goodness yes yeah i agree it's interesting in the song um flowers of evil i think it is uh yes he says dancing by the sea stars Mm -hmm. that's actually a line from city lights by captain swing Really? But I think he said they were singing at the Sea Stars. Huh. On the Slippery Boulevard, I believe is the whole line there for Captain Swing. I'll have to look. But anyway, so that was one of like, oh, I recognize that, Rick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I did, you know, I obviously don't catch it because I'm not um, an expert the, on cap on cap and swing. But say so you're not into yeah. the swing. I love the swing. Oh, I I love the swing, but I'm just not. I I'm sure as much as I have more um familiarity with the cars yeah catalog and rick's catalog you have that equal you're like the opposite with cap and swing yeah well and of course on my blog i did try to write out or i have written out all of the lyrics to all the cap and swing songs yeah some so people me- memorize the bible <laughs> not donna lyrics, baby. <laughs> well i've memorized some of that too yeah not the beatitudes, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in any other favorite songs? 
Um, well, Flowers of Evil I really liked. Rockaway I really liked the way you looked tonight. Uh, toward the end, I kind of, you know, I mean, it, they, they were good. On the song, um, they tried that mm-hmm. little <laughs> that little flute. Yeah. That like I could I love not it. believe. Yeah, I love it. I couldn't believe that was not Greg. That's one thing that's <laughs> that's kind of, and I can see listening to the songs. I can see why. Um, I mean, I, let's see. How would I word this? This this album is really great, and the songs are really great. So they're not lacking Greg, and I can see how having Greg on this album would have changed so much of this the music. But I, it made me a little sad that Greg wasn't on here, especially when I heard that flute. I was like, Rick, or you know, Greg could have done that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he could have. That was just so perfectly Greg. Yeah. So. So I, I think all in all, with these with these first three, um, solo works by Rick, he he started out, um, of the gate, fairly well when it came to his his solo career. Um, I I think as we go on, with our uh, series, you know, I just find out that people lost interest or people weren't aware or just, you know, what have you. But these are probably, these first three are probably the most well-known of, of his solo projects. More than next day. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I think so. Okay. Just my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like all, all of Rick's solo uh, CDs, but glad to, uh, Listen to these three yeah. for the past week, in order, of course. Yes. Over yes. and over and over and over. I just <laughs> finished up Fireball Zone in my uh, riding along with BB. So. <laughs> Do you think? So I was curious about um, about this already, but then when you said that about them not being well known or did people lose interest or whatever, is it uh, does it go back to that dead horse that I like to beat about merchandising? In terms of, Rick has not ever seemed to be a huge promoter. Yeah. I Somewhere, I don't know if it was talking to a person or messaging a person or an article or whatever, but from somewhere, I got the idea that this is supposed to be Rick's, you know, comeback kind of thing and that it wasn't promoted hmm. at all. Now, right. whether that was Rick's decision or you know Geffen's decision or his management's decision who knows but you know let's face it I don't think Rick Rick was uh is or ever has been hurting for money I think he makes music because he has to Mm. he he's you know he has to you know get it out of his system and he's like yeah somebody listens to it what the hell yeah I think there's a big element of that in him it just seems like there is anyway yeah Um, yeah. Which is why any music that he has made that he doesn't want to go to the trouble of releasing officially, he can send to us <laughs> at nightthoughtspodcast at gmail.com, Rick. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing on with our with our Rick solo stuff in future episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. We'll get the next three. And I put it on my notes to try to post some of those videos to find some of those solo videos and post those between now and the next pod just for fun. Yeah, if I if I go down the list, just ones that I know that are out there, keep on laughing, true to you, emotion, emotion. Um, Jimmy, 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 uh, something to grab for. And then off Fireball Zone, you got Rock Away and. The way you look tonight, and all we need is love. Okay. Good. And if you post all we need is love, I want you to tag me <laughs> and say, Dave, this rocks. Watch <laughs> it. Wow. Well, I've which, which by the way, all we need is love. The claymation in it was Paulina's idea. She says. Really, I just. I had yep. no idea there was even a video for this. It's just there you go. a bonus. Yep, there you go. All right. There you go. All right. So let's head off to our midnight scroll, Donna. Take me apart because I'm out of control. Send me a letter on the midnight scroll. Oh, by the way, guess what time it is here? What time? 4.44. <laughs> Woo! All right. 
Salamander Sunrise. <laughs> Don't kick down the door. Yeah. We got some, we got one scroll. So I can read the email that you sent me. And then I actually had um, a message left on my answering machine mm -hmm. about the pod. So I... That's creepy. <laughs> it was a little, um, a little concerning how... Um, I'm not sure how my phone number got out there, so... Wait a second. On your cell phone or on your home phone? My home phone. Yeah, okay. So I, so I sent you an MP3 file of it, so um, I'll, oh. have you, I'll have you play it on your end, and then I can just... I can oh, just you want me to play and put it up to the microphone? Yeah. So that okay, we can hear gotcha. it. Okay. Um, this is called um, Back from Boston, and it's from our friend Elizabeth over in um, England. And she says, hi, Dave and Donna. Thank you for such a great podcast, Back from Boston. You were talking about how important it is to make a relaxed format to make people feel that they wanted to be there taking part in the conversation in the podcast. You went a step further on this occasion. I was actually imagining myself walking to his shop in the little seaside town and discovering David Robinson on his porch and chatting with him in his shop. Great podcast and wonderful, great podcast and wonderful. David enjoyed the Let's Go event and lingered longer afterwards. And Diane Page went too. Like BB, I also can't wait till the next podcast. Liz from England. Wow, BB, they're quoting you now. <laughs> Oh, that was very nice. Thanks, Liz. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, so we happen to have an audio um, scroll. Yes. That I'm going to play. So give me just a second here. All right, so here we go. Okay, you got it? Yep. Go. Hi, Night Thoughts Podcast. This is Barbara. Sorry to leave a message on your machine, but I'm not much for typing emails. I mean, I can type, but it was good time. It's wedding season down at the salon, and our prom schedule is busting. Plus, I got a life, you know? I'm calling because I'm just trying to find out if Rico's been up to his usual shenanigans. Now, I'm not calling my brother a liar. He's got a great big old heart and is basically an upstanding citizen, don't you know? But he's been known to stretch the truth from time to time. It's pretty harmless, like how Charlene says he collects people's hair clippings at the salon when he's sweeping up on Saturdays and he pretends they belong to the members of the cause and he can sell them on eBay. Yeah, it's like that. Well, that's what I want to ask you about. Rico said he was attending some big book shindig for the handsome one from the cause. What's his name, uh, Benjamin Orr? Oh, let me tell you, that Benjamin Orr, he just makes me swoon. What is he, some kind of angel? That voice, those eyes. Well, anyway, I digress. So Rico says he can't sweep up at the shop that weekend because he's got to go up to Boston to be part of this great show. But, you know, I scoured the photos on the socialized media. H to pay. Hmm, there's a clue there. There's a clue Imagine there. Imagine my surprise when I received that message on my answering machine. Yeah. I totally understand. I'm a, I'm a little freaked out that, that Babs, <laughs> Babs is calling us. Well, calling she's... you. Wow. I think it's probably just a matter of time before Rico gets my home phone number and he oh. the messages. You know what I'm saying? I have no doubt. Well, Barbara obviously knows how to ferret out that information, so. <laughs> well, she's a hairdresser. <laughs> so uh, you would be the one that would know. Did you see Rico at the book event? I, the, the only time I saw Rico at the book event was in the book. Of the event. That's, <laughs> That's the only time I speak. All right. Well, I think sounds like he's in trouble then. Yeah. He's, he's, he's going to get his ears boxed. <laughs> his sister doesn't sound like anyone you really want to mess around with. No. Heck no. She's got scissors. 
<laughs> and room. Let's face it. All right. All right. Yeah. Holy moly. <laughs> wow. Well, thanks for calling, Barbara. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for calling there, Babs. <laughs> All right. So that, that does it uh, for our show. Did you like I, that? I feel like I've been lampooned. <laughs> <laughs> that does it for our for our show this time, folks. As always, thank you for listening. We, we appreciate it. Uh, we, we appreciate your feedback. And as always... As Becky says, stay fresh, cheese bags. Bye. for listening to Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast. Wherever you found us, iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Send us an email for the Midnight Scroll at nightthoughtspodcast at gmail.com. As always, Night Thoughts reserves the right to edit or not read an email on the air. You can follow us on Twitter at the Cars Podcast. Grab yourself a podcast t-shirt at tpublic.com backslash user backslash night thoughts. All the cool kids are wearing them. Oh, and finally, search for The Cars Night Thoughts on Facebook and join our group page. P.S. I am totally Team Rick.